I was looking back through some old videos of mine where I talk about being alone in the dark room and where my channel is going to go in the state of being alone in the dark room. Let's explore that. Hey guys, I'm gonna spend a four hour live stream just showing you myself in my room and trying to come up with commentary for that. Hey guys, I'm gonna do that every day. Oh boy, I'm gonna do that every day. Well, that was a thing. That was a thing that that I constantly said in my videos back then. Um, I'd say, oh boy, all the time. I was thinking about, well, why, why did I say that so much? Because, like, I, I literally sound surprised when I would say it. Well, there, there would be a, a surprise tone in my voice when I would say it. Oh boy. Um, and I think it was because I'd go into the video sort of like, with the expectation that what I was saying was going to be perceived a certain way, or I wasn't, e not even like anxious about it in that sense necessarily, but I was just unsure of what I was doing. It was spontaneous. There was no planning involved. I didn't really think about anything I was going to say. Um, and so ended up with this situation where, like, what do you say that's surprised as, as a surprised reaction to something, or, like, you're going into something and anticipating it being something that you don't necessarily have the answer for, or you're inherently leaving room open to doubt because you haven't planned ahead. You say, oh boy, it's unexpected. And that was the tone of a lot of my stuff back then, for the longest time, arguably now still. I've been saying that I want my content to have more of a polished edge to it, but I don't know what polished is. I, I don't think I know how to do polished. Like, all of my most artistic videos have been videos in which I was not polished per se, but the brand of creativity that I have, which is spontaneous, just happened to line up emotionally with uh, some scenes that in writing worked well visually, or that I, I just happened to come across the right footage that was able to fit with the scenes that I came up with in writing that were only put together in the way that they were because they were sort of rhythmically exploring a set of emotions using experiences that I had as the base for that or the skeleton for that. The thing that led you on through the story was the story. It was exploring those experiences as a jumping off point to analyze my emotions and tie those emotions to a broader set of concepts. Those seem to be the videos, the obvious examples being these four walls and company and so on. Um, those are the videos that people say that they seem to con connect with the most. And I can see why. Those are videos that have meant a lot to me and I was really proud of making them, but I don't know if I really have anything like that left. Like at this point, do I have something like that? Do I have something where I feel so strongly about it that I just have to make something saying something about it? That like there's this emotional drive that I'm either really suicidal or or it, it just means so much to me that the people have to understand. I, I have to impart those feelings onto somebody else. Is there anything like that now? 
Is there any issue that I need to work out so badly that I need to put it in into paper? Or I guess in this case, into paper and then video? I, I don't think so. I, it's like whenever I feel anything strongly now, it's like I'm grasping at straws to make myself feel the thing strongly because I identify more with who I used to be in an emotional sense than who I am now. And it's like I've been at this constant information war with myself about who's the real Osaka Syndrome, where consciously I know and have always known that I'm a very sensitive person and it's just depending on what art you look at I'm denying that ardently choosing to understand or misunderstand rather but choosing to misunderstand the more robotic side and focus exclusively on it and the various benefits you can get from it and vice versa with the more emotional side and then trying to come to some kind of more balanced view um, that is is leaning in one extreme or the other either way for the sake of entertainment not of the people that's only a bonus but of myself you know it, it's like I, I've turned making videos into a lifestyle when it's videos about a lifestyle and so the the lifestyle content itself becomes a lifestyle that the lifestyle content is about and then that that sort of cyclical um, lens by which you're viewing the world uh, also influences the way that you're thinking about it and then at a certain point you can just become so enveloped in your own kayfabe that you actually believe that whatever character you're portraying is real or you actively try to make yourself more of that character which you're not um, with you know the kind of mental gymnastics that you know need you to to jump around in your own head trying to connect this piece of information to that and ignoring the pieces of information that contradict it, it I wanted to form an identity around certain consistencies that required you to heavily emphasize them and de-emphasize other ones so much that they basically didn't exist. It's, it's about obfuscating the things that contradict the person who you see yourself as. And at this point, I don't find whatever amalgamations of those traits that I can make interesting, nor can I buy into it enough to embrace whatever character I'm portraying fully. And so if I feel dishonest in doing it, then I can't do it. It's just too uncomfortable for me to produce that kind of thing now. And it was before as well. I was just better at making myself believe in the narrative. And this is in no way meant to downplay the truthfulness of the majority of my videos. I think the majority of them do come from a true place. It's only to single out a certain trend that you have to be looking at me with a microscopic lens in order to be able to notice. In other cases, it's it's obvious, you know, if you look through all of my videos, you'll find some obvious examples of what I'm talking about. Um, and a lot of that could easily just be chalked up to the gradual process of self-discovery that everyone goes into and the um, not so gradual process of some teenagers heavily identifying with things that they end up not identifying with at all when they get older. Um, I just seem to, like some people, cycle through those things really quickly. Um, and it, it can be kind of funny to watch that play out, especially considering how much I would double down on it and defend myself as someone who um, is just insanely consistent or whatever. Again, bending things that are true in order to 
to fit a narrative, you know, framing them in a certain way, while ignoring other things. Um, I just don't like doing stuff like that anymore. I, I, I don't find it interesting. Um, and I can't make myself believe it. I don't want to say I'm too unbiased now to believe it, because I clearly have biases, but I, I can't. I can't make myself see an untrue version of how things are. Um, and in a sense, that makes me more lonely. Because it's much easier to just portray a falsehood that's easy to understand for yourself and for other people than it is to portray the reality which has too many intermingling parts to explain in one situation or another when people are inconsistent I am inconsistent and we can't always go out there with our reporter hat on or whatever and, and provide a, a, a sermon on the the efficacy of this trade or that trade and where it comes from um, not everyone wants to hear that and it's it, essentially what I'm saying is that there are confrontational aspects of myself things that can make it difficult to go along with the crowd and such um, things that make it difficult to work well with other people or at least for me to feel comfortable working with them um, that because I can't express those things as the truth or mention them or talk about them uh, I'll feel very very isolated because those those aspects of myself aren't being spoken about they just exist in my head they don't exist with anybody else and it's only recently uh, that I've had one person that I've been sh able to share a lot of these uh, deeper secrets with that I felt a lot more grounded and because I felt a lot more grounded I felt a lot happier because there aren't these things that are untold that are weighing on my shoulders anymore they're just they're out there and I think you know, almost every human being needs that that sense that somebody's listening to you somebody has listened to you um, and and these feelings and thoughts that you're having aren't just resting on the inside of your head you know flying back and forth and they're tormenting you because it only makes you feel more alone the more that that you're uh, that you're conscious of of the fact that like only you know these things you know especially when the fact that more people don't know them um, makes it to where the the perspective that people are filtering you through is an untrue one in a sense or it's skewed people are viewing you from a skewed perspective because they don't have this information um, and that can make you feel very alone and isolated too because at that point it's like only you have an accurate perspective on yourself and everyone else, all of the things that they're saying, is filtered through an inaccurate one. Um, it's no wonder that I, I've talked so much in the past about feeling as though I'm inside of a circle when I'm surrounded by other people or just with other people in general, speaking to them, because of course you're gonna you're gonna feel like you're alone in a room you're the only one in the room everybody else outside of your space when you're not really allowing yourself to inhabit their space I don't see anything wrong with that as long as you're able to stay grounded and share these parts of yourself somewhere they don't have to be for everybody a lot of people wouldn't be able to handle 
some of the secrets that to be a little bit melodramatic uh, probably end up taking to my grave um, I don't see anything wrong with that I think it's just a normal part of being a person everybody's got a few skeletons in their closet um, I probably take mine more seriously than I should and I've been trying to less lately because it's really not that big of a deal um, most things most things are when you think about them in a pragmatic sense but something I used to do in a lot of the old videos was make jokes just on the fly that I hadn't considered or thought about when going into the videos I just did a lot of them didn't land some of them did and there were very very few that did really well people thought were impressive very few of those but they'd come in sometimes but none of the ones that really landed or landed at all would have been able to be made without all of the ones that didn't land and I, I think this is what normies mean when they say you have to put yourself out there or you you have to you, you have to practice at socializing in order to have any um, chance I think I've allowed myself to stagnate in the sense that even though I've had social interactions pretty regularly recently ones where I do feel a part of the conversation and I'm enjoying them and and I'm bubbly and having a nice time um, I I feel like a lot of my my humor or jokes that I would have made in the past don't end up coming through there is one group where they will absolutely come through like in in the upper 90s of percents of the time um, and I'm really thankful for that type tightly knit group of friends that I have going on there um, because I can just be silly and, and that's okay but like I think I used to have way more confidence to just make all kinds of different jokes and at some point it just gotten it has just gotten beaten out of me that you know you're, you're not supposed to experiment in this way anymore um, or or often and I felt like I was safer if I didn't try to experiment than I was if I did and so a lot of the stuff that I learned and the places in which I had improved um, started to dissipate over time because with any skill if you're not using it it's gonna it's gonna deteriorate here I am um, looking to my old self for advice because she was the one who got the things done and now I'm trying to figure out how to do them again it's a weird predicament because I think part of it was was being honest about the whole trans thing and that threw a wrench in my circuitry because now I'm going to be more anxious about everything my performance socializing etc because I, I'm giving you a more real version of star I, I'm that you have more of the truth to work with and so it's more like you're judging me the person than some arbitrary caricature of the person or a character entirely it, it's easier to deflect criticism or to not be affected by 
potential um, rejection uh, if the person you're projecting out onto the world is not real. Um, whereas now, I, I have more of that to sort through. It is difficult. Um, and I think that, coupled with how much rejection and embarrassment I received, you know, one after another from people, people who I valued in one sense or another, and just the overstimulation of so much of it from other people as well at once in recent times and last year. I can, it just overload my, overloaded my system. And being someone with the kind of upbringing that I had, um, where you know, I, I had to be hypersensitive to the prospect of danger in order to effectively suppress it, or lessen its blow, um, I had to reprogram that internal wiring um, to make it to where I had less extreme reactions to displays of potential rejection or anger. I had to train myself to not see them as the direct physical kind of danger that I had been forced to always be looking for the signs of because tiny, insignificant, innocuous uh, things that would make no sense to a normal person as something causing anger or a potentially violent response, um, I had to always see. And my worldview or how I understood people's reactions to things was filtered through that lens. So when I started interacting with normal people, when they would say something that was just normal among normal people, I would see it as an ultra high level threat, like super, super dangerous, um, because I was operating on a skewed perception of the world um, where I had to instinctually be cognizant of all of the feelings in the room. Um, especially ones that indicated some kind of anger or danger, which, uh, again, were so small that you have to be looking really hard and you have to be very, very sensitive to them. That sensitivity, when you carry it over into the real world where things don't work that way with normal people, um, and you apply it because it's become instinctual, it's become subconscious, you're recognizing patterns that other people aren't dealing with, um, you're going to end up in a situation where uh, you do get angry and cause conflict and feel hurt and rejected when um, it, it's not appropriate. And I've had to train myself to see when it is appropriate and when it's not. That's been a very difficult process, but it's one that I think I'm pretty close to winning completely at this point, which is impressive given how bad I had been at certain points. So I, I just, I want to pat myself on the back for that one because I feel like I could have lost way more friends if I didn't do something about it. But the other reason why I'm hesitant when it comes to telling jokes or experimenting more with them is because there is that part of me in the back of my head that goes, when is she going to become a bad person again? Or, oh, she's got to rein it in. She's got to, she's got to be very controlling of herself in order to not cause some kind of uh, unintentional conflict again, in order to not lose another friend, even though whatever thoughts I have now are largely harmless, and I don't think would do that, or if they did, I am much, much better at managing conflict now, and I have 
basically no ego to speak of when it comes to disagreements. I will just eventually agree with the other person I'm talking to because I don't care. <laughs> um, it, and so, like, I, I'm very, uh, what do you call it, easygoing um, and malleable in social situations, which makes it very easy for me to manage conflict because I don't have any stakes in the game as far as identity goes, um, unless it's something very, very fundamental to me, like a trans issue or something, but those things are few and far in number. Um, and so, uh, I, in, at the brink of a conflict, or at the helm of a conflict, I think is a better phrasing there, um, I tend to defuse things rather quickly. Now, who have made it this far in the video, I have closed my Patreon. Now, my Patreon effectively, well, not effectively, it, it just doesn't exist anymore. Um, it's not real. You're not here anymore. Patreon. Patreon's gone. Now, why did I do that? Why didn't, why didn't I just leave the door open for people to send me money if they wanted to send me money. Uh, the simple reason is it feels weird having a Patreon when I'm producing you know, content like this all the time. I'm probably going to be producing content like this all the time. I, I don't want to be beholden to anyone financially. When you know, the point of this channel is, is and has always been to just do whatever I want, but I think some people at least had the expectation that I was going to kind of go beyond that. Um, maybe I had the expectation that I was going to kind of go beyond that. Um, but here we are. And I, I make videos very infrequently now because I only make videos when I want to make a video. When I, when I have something to say, I, I don't try to force myself to say things. Now, some of these old videos I was watching of me, I try very, very hard to sound entertaining, or at least I can tell that that's what I was trying to do, and I could tell that I came up with that idea just because I needed a video that day, or I needed a video that week, or a few days after the last one, or that month, or whatever. There's a desperation to it that, while entertaining to other people, and sometimes it forced me to explore interesting ways of editing or expressing things, uh, that experimentation to me was ultimately not worth um, making a product that was less than what I'd like. Not in terms of, of polish, but in terms of uh, emotional gratification or like comfort with it existing. It, I don't like that pressure to be producing something. And this is the thing, it's like, um, I think what a lot of people who have patroned me in the past expected when they patroned me was more written content. And I like writing, and I want to write more. But the kind of writing that I've done on this channel I don't think is the kind of writing that you're going to see from me anytime soon, if any writing anytime soon. I've been reading a lot more again, and that reading I've seen has weaved its way into the essays that I sometimes send back and forth to people on Discord that I'm friends with, and I want more of that. I want to get more of my writing practice out to friends of mine in conversation, and I want to read more in order to take what's being read and apply it to my own writing, write more extensive notes so I have a larger body of education to approach the next subject, whatever that might be. 
I need more experiences too. If I'm going to take the experiential approach that I've had towards a number of my scripts that I've been able to produce with less emotional force behind them than some of the videos that are more widely praised but nonetheless also written. I'm at a crossroads creatively because I feel much, much more emotionally stable this year than I ever have had. Um, but I'm also much less able to feel pleasure and much less able to feel the kind of creative drives that have fueled some of those videos that people might call some of my best and may have supported me with the idea in mind that I'd produce more of those things when the emotions weren't there to produce them. I need a different model. I need a model that's more effective um, and that I can get more out of. And in terms of immediate challenges, I have to allow myself not to be too afraid to experiment more with how I'm presenting things or with jokes. I need to not be so afraid of that rejection that I rule out experimentation. And this I've already done, but I need to not force myself to make something if for the time being I don't want to make it, because that only leads to the kind of self-delusion that I was talking about earlier, or just outright falsifications of me conjuring up certain narratives with one perspective in mind about myself to then explore and then later contradict a, a few months later. I, I just, I don't think that's very interesting. Um, I've told most of the real life stories that I've had. There are some angles that I'd like to explore some of them from that you haven't heard yet. Certain things you haven't heard yet either. Um, and there's room for that. There's time for that. But I want to do it right. And that's part of where all the studying comes in because if, if I'm studying and consuming information um, and, and applying that to my own rhetorical skills, I, I'm, I'm approaching the subject with, with more. You know, I'm, I'm, I have a bigger arsenal as far as vocabulary and ways of framing things goes. Um, that's what I'm working on. I, I'm, I'm not working on on making. I'm, I'm working more on consuming. And I feel a lot more self-aware now than I used to be. Um, and I, I feel really happy in the sense that I think I've gotten to a point where most of my days are like a 5 or 6 out of 10. I, I struggle with motivation still and there are some kind of um, what do you call it peripheral ways that I've been getting around that but who knows who knows how long that can be kept up um, I probably sound pretty depressed in this video but I'm not I, I just have a very calm demeanor and I've always been very very low energy you know my vitamin intake is really good it's been really good for the past several months as far as other nutrition and things goes as well you wouldn't be able to tell you would not be able to tell by looking at me because I'm just an, a naturally small person I, I look malnourished. Um, there have been times when things economically have been strained and um, it may have been difficult to do this or that but in large part I've been okay. It's just a matter of being small. Well, my low energy isn't isn't a result of poor nutrition. Um, 
that that I seem to be going pretty strong on. It's it's more so just a result of how I am. Um, I've always been plagued by a certain malaise that makes it difficult to do anything beyond uh, things that are immediate in pleasure. It goes the same with how I sporadically produce videos and always have. You know, you, you've never seen anything carefully planned out for me, ever, you know? Um, so I, I want to take um, the approach of having that sporadic energy be used wisely uh, towards things that, you know, I like or I care about, while also trying to foster um, a, a more effective way of applying it, and perhaps a new pro approach entirely as to how I make things. And that's, that's what this... Uh, adjourned period in, in video making is for me where, where you get things like this but you don't really get much else because I'm studying right now you know, I, I'm working on learning things I, I'm working on on trying to to adjust the way I see things because I've seen things too narrowly for too long um, I've explored too many of the same topics and I tried my best to creatively reframe them, to make them interesting, but there's only so many times you can talk about being in a dark room. I can probably do it way more than anybody else, but there's only so many times you can do that. And this community, whatever you want to call it, this, um, series of people making videos like this or talking about stuff like this like it's it's cyclical it it just repeats and repeats and repeats it, it doesn't really change I don't want to be another cog in that machine and if that means making very few videos then so be it I shouldn't be financially obligated to anybody because of my workflow the way that I produce things um, is tied to this low energy, very low motivation person who tends to go with the, the feeling that produces something stronger, you know? Um, and if there's any effort involved, if there's extra time that's involved, uh, they, they tend to go tend to go with go go away on that one you know um it was very difficult for me it's very very difficult for me to do anything that that has any structure or planning to it um, um i've always um i've always been really spontaneous and guided guided more by feelings than um, structures <sighs> but you know, like I said I've probably said too much at this point um, but that's kind of the point isn't it it's kind of the point There's no quality guarantee here anymore. Only what I want. You're in my domain. 